to all things fibre, as you could have guessed from the natural fibre. Um, so thank you to Jan for all the, all the lovely cooking, and now I'll give you a bit of healthy information. <laughs> We've got a little presentation, but there's no um, screen set up, so we can turn that around later. So to start off with, what is fibre? You know, you've probably all heard of it. Um, so it's actually a type of carbohydrate, and it's a part found in all the different types of plant foods, all the fruits and veggies and grains that isn't digested in the stomach. So it's what passes throughout the other end. So it actually, as it moves through your stomach and your digestive system, it starts to ferment. And you've probably heard of, you know, gut health is all the rage in your microbiome. And that fibre, that fermenting fibre, is what really helps to feed those bugs, all the little healthy bugs that are living in your tummy. So we really want fibre. It's going to help to keep your um, gut nice and healthy. So there is three different types of fibre. There's soluble fibre, insoluble fibre, and resistant starch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 Jen, the video music Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so there's the two main types of fibre in the natural fibre are the soluble and the insoluble fibre. So the soluble fibre, as the name sort of suggests, it dissolves in water. So when you eat it, it dissolves in the water in your stomach and it forms a bit of a gel. So that gel moves slowly through your intestines and it helps to keep you feeling nice and full. So if you find that you have your breakfast or you have a meal and you're hungry really soon after, it could be that you need to include more fibre in that meal. Okay, so it helps to keep you nice and full, helps to prevent constipation as well. And it can also help lower cholesterol. So if that's an issue for you, bumping up that soluble fibre, as that gel moves through your intestines, it helps to pick up cholesterol and move it out. So then the insoluble fibre, that's sort of the, the husky skin and the, and the bulky bits that you see in your food, in your fruit and veg. So that helps to add bulk to everything in your digestive system, so it bolts up your stools, helps to soften them, it helps everything pass through really nicely, and that type of fibre helps to keep you feeling full as well. Are there any questions so far? So is that why you should peel food? Yeah, don't peel. All the good fibres are, are in the skin, so the veggies. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So of course some things I do want to peel, yeah. <laughs> but when you can, yeah, keep them. So what would be an example of insoluble versus soluble? Like would it be the psyllium, is that insoluble or? Yeah, yeah. so there's lots of different, so the um, soluble fibres in your oats and your seeds and your beans and things like that and then the insoluble is that skin on the fruit and that, you know, if you look at brown rice versus white rice, the brown rice has that extra brown layer and that's the insoluble fibre. And the third one is the resistant starch. So that's a special, sort of a new type of fibre. It's in pasta and potatoes and rice after it's been cooked and then cooled down. So that's just an extra little fibre that you can add in to just help those gut bugs and that gut health as well. That's an example of some of that can be so. Yeah, so cooked and cooled potato or pasta or rice. Yeah, yeah. 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 or you can reheat it, it's still. It's just the cooking, cooling, and then you can either eat it cold or, or reheat it and have it off again. Um, so why do you need fibre? You know, talking about fibre and how good it is, but why do you actually need it? So it helps to keep your bowels healthy, keep everything moving. And it can help also to reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes, obesity, it helps to lower your cholesterol levels, um, and can also help to prevent some cancers as well. So you really want to be including fibre in your diet. Um, definitely a very important nutrient to focus on. Now, how much do you need? Does anyone know? <laughs> oh, I would think 50 grams. Actually, a bit lower. 30. 
25 grams a day for women and, and 30 for men. It is quite conservative. Um, we do encourage when you can to eat more than that. The more fibre, the better. Um, so the CSIRO are suggesting now maybe 38 grams a day for men and 28 grams a day for women. So just bumping it up a little bit because we're learning so much about how helpful it can be for our, our guts and our tummies. So that normal? Like eating more, like, like Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. it like a tiny spoon? 20, 20 grams. Yes, I mean, you, to look at it in the context of you know, a whole food, if you're having, say, six serves of grains a day, so if you're having a, a half a cup of rice and you're having two slices of whole grain bread and then making sure you're getting your five serves of veggies, so that's, you know, five cups of salad veg or, or um, two and a half cups of cooked veg. And then the natural fibre as well, in a tablespoon of that, that's got 10 grams of fibre in there. So if you're struggling to bump up your fibre, Having some seeds, nuts and seeds, in with your breakfast cereal or your oats, that can be a good way to get it up there as well. So that's half of your daily fibre intake, just in almost. Yeah. yeah, about 40% in the 35 gram serve of the natural fibre psyllium. So, um, yeah, most of us aren't meeting the recommended amount of fibre, only about 7 in 10 are really getting up there for their fibre intake, so it's something we could all work on. Um, and then, yeah, where to find your fibre, so fruit, vegetables and legumes, um, try and choose whole grains where you can, so whole grain bread, brown rice, wholemeal pasta, oats, um, cereals like your bran and your wheat bix as well, um, <coughs> nuts and seeds like I said, and then of course the um, natural fibre if you want to sprinkle that on, or make some of Jan's lovely recipes that she's added the um, seed mix to as well. So just some tips for increasing your fibre intake. Add fibre slowly to your diet. If you're not used to it, it can be a bit of a shock to your tummy, <laughs> get the bloating, the wind. We want to try and avoid that. So a large increase can cause those sort of symptoms in your tummy. So try to increase it slowly, you know, add a, an extra half a cup of oats here or an extra apple there. Um, and if you're having the natural fibre, just increase that a couple of spoonfuls each day. Just go slowly. Um, the other thing to do when you're increasing your fibre is to increase your water intake as well. So too much fibre, not enough water, things get blocked up and they, they don't move out like we want them to. So make sure that you're having um, your six to eight glasses of water a day. So aim for a couple of litres of water along with your fibre intake as well to keep everything nice and healthy. Um, and then of course, food first. We like to go for a food first approach, so just having lots of fruits, veggies, whole grains, or your um, seeds as well, before we start looking at any sort of supplements if you do need a bit of help with your um, bowels and your gut health. Alright, so that was pretty much everything on um, fibre. we will just give you a little bit of a rundown on the natural fibre and, and what that does. So per serve in the psyllium, we've got 10.3 grams of fibre. So as Jenna said before, that's 40% you know, of your daily fibre intake, so that's one way to really get your intake up. Um, it's containing both soluble and insoluble fibre, so both of those mixed together are really going to help your bowels and help your gut health as well. And then the natural fibre is also a prebiotic, so that helps to feed those gut bugs and really help to um, increase the health of your microbiome as well. So that's going to help your gut health, all your digestion, and then that will also lead to an increase in your immune system as well. So there's a lot of research coming out now about the gut, a healthy gut is linked to a, a strong, healthy immune system too. So if you can really get that fibre intake up, it's going to benefit you in lots of different ways. What's actually in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one, I'll just read through the ingredients. So it's psyllium husk, pepita, sunflower kernels, wind seeds, chia seeds, sesame seeds, poppy seeds, buckwheat and millet in this one. But then there's the other varieties as well. So some of them contain oats and then there's um, a dried fruit mix as well. Yeah. Are there any other questions? 
everyone just ready to eat? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, um, do you buy that in supermarkets yet, or is it just... So we're in four stores around Brisbane, um, and we also sell most of our um, products online on our website. Um, so um, at the end of today, I can send you all an email with information about natural fibre, um, a link to our social media platform, and it's got lots of different recipe ideas on there about how you can eat it. Um, I don't have much time in the morning, so I've got two little boys, two and three, so I just pop it into a smoothie and blend it and drink it. And then that's me done, and I know I've got my fibre up, my fibre booster for the day. Oh, sorry, so we're at Hillston Grocer, um, we're in Hawthorne Garage um, and Albion Marketplace, um, and also within our store at our office in Lyfton, Orkham Flower as well. Yeah. yeah, if you're ever in Orkham Flower, just drop by because we're always there, <laughs> always working. <laughs> yes, I do, yes, yeah. I'm <laughs>